Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. Uh, and I've got four wines here from Italy. Now these wines were kindly donated by Jeremy Parson, uh, who, Dr. Jeremy Parson, and uh, also known as Do Bianchi. I'll have a link to his um, uh, website below. Of course, I've also had a link to the uh, Cantelli. Uh, he does work for Cantelli. Um, he does blog work for them, so he, he, he's a representative of them. And uh, he uh, asked me quite a few months ago, well, probably three or four months ago, I guess, at this point, if I wouldn't mind reviewing some Italian wine. I said, oh, well, of course I wouldn't mind. Um, and, of course, over the, uh, over the past couple months, with everything that's been going on, I haven't had a chance to, to review it. So finally got a chance to review it. Oh, by the way, go Spurs, go. We swept the Miami Heat, right? I don't know. I... I um, on record, I'm going to say that we're going to win in six, which means tomorrow night we should close out. Tomorrow night we're closing out on their home court. I'm hoping we sweep, hoping that we swept, but on video, because I'm recording this on Thursday before game one, the same day as I recorded the uh, Indian wine. Anyway, Obi-Wan Ginobili, just saying. He's not as Jedi-like as he, as he was five, six, seven years ago, but he's still phenomenal. All right, enough of that. It's back to the wine. All right, so um, <clears throat> anyway, Jeremy uh, contacted me. I said I'd be more than happy to review some wine. So he sent me four bottles. So we're going to try to compress everything into one show. Um, all these bottles are from the um, Puglia, Puglia, Apulia area of Italy. Now, Apulia or Puglia, um, is the heel part of Italy. And Cantale is, the, the winery is in the southernmost part of the heel. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're, they're located, uh, oh, they're actually located in the town of Le, uh, uh, Lici. Lici. Um, Lici. Uh, not like the Lici fruit, but Lici. Not Lece. Lici, L-E-C-C-E. -E. Um, I probably should have looked at that real quick. Uh, yeah, they're, they're in, as far as they're actually in Lychee. So, uh, go through the history real quick. Yada, 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 yada. Let's see. Uh, anyway, so the, the, the owner, the owner, the founder of the winery lived in northern Italy. Um, he uh, became, after World War II, became a, a, um, a supplier, or uh, um, not a supplier, but... <clears throat> He uh, he sold uh, the bulk wine from this from the Apulia area of uh, Italy to the northern uh, Italian winemakers because they needed something extra to give their, their wine a little oomph. Uh, this is not the only country that d that did this. Uh, France was also well known to do that. Um, the French wines from the southern eastern part of France um, they uh, they used a lot of their wines to help bulk up their wines and. When they when when Algeria used to be part of France, they would sell a lot of the Algerian wine, which is yet on the list for me to try, uh, to to uh, France to help bulk up their wines too, with the alcohol content, color, flavor, all that kind of stuff. So um, it's not done as much now because all these laws governing how much you can have of this, that, and the other to be able to call your wine that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen at all. It might still happen. But it's all—it's definitely on the down low, um, because of the wine laws in in Italy and France and all over Europe. Okay, so anyway, um, yeah. So they they uh, he, one of his business trips um, to Lychee, uh, he had his wife with him. His wife said, "We're not leaving," effectively, or says, "We're moving here," 
is so that's what they did and that, that was very unusual especially at the time because southern italy um and as far as i know it's, it's still very much like this um it's a very agricultural based part of italy while northern italy is a lot more industrial and especially after the war you had a lot of people moving from southern italy to go up to northern italy for jobs so to do that to go from northern italy to southern italy a reverse migration um, was very unusual at the time uh, and, and, and i knew all this before i read this on the website just so you know um, but so that that reverse migration and and really southern italy is still um, I don't want to say that the, the, it's the poorer part of Italy, but it's definitely still an agricultural, um, it has more agriculture going on than industrialization. So um, uh, there's more money uh, invested in the north. Anyway, so uh, they moved down there. Uh, they started a winery and um, uh, it, several generations are involved with the winery and uh, they own quite a few um Quite a few vineyards. Uh, they own 50 hectares, um, and then um, they have another 150 owned by other growers. And uh, they've got a lot, a lot of the family: sons, grandsons, daughters, granddaughters um, are involved in making the wine. And uh, <clears throat> see, it says they produce two million bottles annually, including indigenous Puglia's grapes like Primitivo, Negro Maro and other international varieties. So we're about to have some of those wines. Right meow. Yeah, I just said that. Okay, so let's, what are we gonna have first? We're gonna have Chardonnay. So Chardonnay is not the first grape you think of when you think about Italian wines now, right, is it? Uh, this is the 2011 Chardonnay. Uh, it's 100% Chardonnay. I do appreciate the fact that the website gives you uh, this information um, because we know that depending on the laws of the country, um, you can mix other grapes in there. So it's 100% Chardonnay. Um, they say they harvest in the first 10 days of August. Now, southern Italy, especially this part of Italy, is hot. It can get really hot. So um, it's not unusual to have earlier uh, harvest than, say, France, Germany especially. Um, so, you know, they're, they're harvesting in October, I'm sorry, September, Sometimes October, um, but like your late harvest wine, so your, your sweeter wines, your dessert wines, your riper wines, when we're talking about German wines are, you know, end of September, October, November, sometimes December when you're getting to the very, very uh, uh, sweet wines and the dessert wines and the ice wines, you know, so um, anyway, so first 10 days in August. And um, let's see, I think they are, yeah, fermentation is carried out in stainless steel and it looks like that's the aging too. Um, there's, there's no there's no wood, it looks like, at all, which is my preferred Chardonnay, but it doesn't mean I don't like uh, oaked Chardonnays either. So let's check it out. Nice golden color, okay? Interesting aroma. Not my typical <clears throat> lemon lime or even apple necessarily. I'm kind of going through what it's not to get to what it is because it's a pleasant aroma, unlike last week's wines. I almost want to say kind of like banana. Something kind of like that. which I never get in a wine period, even though I know that's one of the aromas you might get. Reset the nose. Yeah, it, it, it's aromatically challenged, let's put it that way. But it, it's like a, I wouldn't say banana, kind of like honey. You know what? It's almost like candy corn. So this is not a, these are not bad for me. These are not aromas that I'm not that I'm not enjoying. Let's just taste it. Let's just taste the wine. Now, 
Now, some really good acidity on, on it. I'm getting more of the normal Chardonnay flavors. Um, so it's not palate, it's not a palate challenged wine at all. Um, really, really high acid. Which I'm a little surprised about. <clears throat> Considering, you know, how, how Apulia is a fairly hot area. What's with the... <clears throat> see what the alcohol is on it. 12 and a half alcohol, so it's not high alcohol. And they talk about apple and floral characteristics. And I can kind of see the apple. But I don't know why. I still feel like I could get like this. This, um, this kind of um, banana honey type of, um, type of flavor to it. What I'm doing right now is I'm looking at the prices because I know... Jeremy sent me these things. I don't remember there being any prices on it. So I wanted to see what it goes for. Okay. So it looks like, just in general, the bottles are, all these are going to be in the $10 and under range, it looks like. Um, when I'm looking at some of the, um, just can tell a, in general on Wine Searcher. So yeah, under $10 looks like so. These are definitely value wines. I want to really dive into this because there's really something about it that that I'm, I'm, I'm I like that I'm that I just can't identify. Yeah, I really kind of get more of the apple now. Um, very high acidity. I want to say very high. It's got some acid to it. Um, you know, it's not it's not <clears throat> buttery. It's not it's not all this um, rounded, buttery, silky, full fat type of Chardonnay. This is lean and mean. Um, it's I, you really need food with this one. You need to pair it with some good food. Um, it, 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 you know, Chardonnay is is one of those is one of those grapes that you know I, I tend to like um, when when the time is right, um, but I don't seek it out a lot. I tend to always look for something else. I like the wine. Especially for something that's under ten dollars, I think it's a I think it's a really good deal. Um, again, I don't score wines anymore, so I'm not even going to speculate what I would give it. But I like the wine; I recommend it. I think you should buy it. Uh, remember, I, these these are all donated to me, but there's no pressure for me to say, "Oh, these are phenomenal, and you need to go out and buy it right now." Um, I like the wine; uh, it's a, it's a decent decent Chardonnay. Um, it's nothing. I wouldn't say it's like the best ever, um, but it's definitely a good, you know, probably eight to ten dollar bottle of wine. Um, you're you're going to be pleased with it. It's going to it tastes pretty good. Uh, it's it's more apple, um, and I still kind of feel like I get that kind of honey and banana part to it. Um, but it's it's not it's not overly complex. It's 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 um <clears throat> I don't want to say simple or basic, but it's it's or one dimensional. I don't like those all sound kind of negative, but it's it's not a complex wine. And so it it's it's straightforward. That's that's kind of a way to, to say it. it's a straightforward wine. It's like, hey, this is what I am. If you like it, cool. If you don't, move on. So now if you're looking for buttery Chardonnays, this is not it. You're not gonna like this wine. If you're looking for that cleaner style um, with acidity, I wouldn't say it has a lot of minerality to it. But if you're looking for some acidity. There's a little bit of greenness to it. Now I'm getting a little more that um, green pepper, almost. And granted, you know this is uh, 
Jeremy just tweeted me back. Yeah, and like like what happens with these wines a lot, as I drink them a little bit, they open up a little more, they get better. It's definitely a recommendation. We're talking $10 and under uh, on the price. You know, it's just, if you're like, hey, I'll have an Italian Chardonnay, you know, have it. Um, it's again, it's not it's not what I would I would gravitate towards. I probably wouldn't have bought this bottle at the wine shop because when I think of Italian wines, I think of Italian grapes, which is the rest of these, not Chardonnay. But at the same time, they make Chardonnay in Italy. They use Syrah. They use Cabernet Sauvignon. They use Merlot. Um, usually, the other those last three in blends with other with other wines for like Super Tuscans and things like that. Um, but this is definitely a good Chardonnay. I I really like it. Um, just so you know, all these are going to be called, these are all, all going to be the, in the Salento IGT, Indicazione Geografica Tipica, okay? So that's kind of like uh, Italy's like broad um, quality wine uh, designation when the winemakers are kind of like, hey, I'm going to do what I want, all right? Um, so it's, they don't have to follow any DOC or DOCG uh, laws as far as what wines are, what grapes are using, or how much aging they're doing, or what they're aging it in. You know, they they and 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 if they're getting grapes from outside of a, maybe a tighter area, uh, these are all from Puglia. So it's not like they took Chardonnay from California or took Chardonnay from another part of the world from from France and said, hey, let's mix it in here. Those all from a, it's all from a Puglia. But um, it's good wine. I'm surprised. I, I, I really didn't think I was going to... I thought it was going to be like, eh. But I like it. I like it. All right. So now let's move on. Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to take a little little uh, actual... Well, yeah, we're going to take a little break. We're going to have four breaks this time. Or three breaks. Anyway. So we're going to move on to wine number two. All right. So on to wine number two. Uh, the rest of these wines are all red wines. And these are more typical... Uh, Italian varietals. Uh, also, uh, you probably can't tell because the, the editing software is going to take care of everything. But um, I talked about, oh, I got three new batteries. Well, they're all, they were all at the very end of their, their charge after the first show because they, they were on for a long time. Um, so I got the other three batteries and only two of them worked. The third one, I think it was one of the replacements I got. And I, when I put it on the charger, it read green. I was like, well, it means it's charged. It's kind of weird, but I'll leave it on the charger overnight. It's not charged. I, I mess with it on the charger. If you really press hard into the charger, it goes. The little light goes red. So I'm gonna return on that one too. I'm just gonna ask them to exchange it. I'm sure they will. Anyway, um, so let's move on. So we're at the 2010. Let's close that off. We'll close that off, and that way I can go to the actual web page for this. We're gonna go to uh, a 2010 uh, Negro Amaro. Um, and Negro Amaro is another is a is a native grape to Italy, um, and it's native to the Puglia area. And um, <clears throat> this wine is 100%. Now we've got two wines of the same grape. This is a wine that they aged in stainless steel. Uh, it says the harvest was mid September. Um, and uh, blah 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 blah. And they uh, macerate with skin, the must macerates with skin contact for six to seven days. Okay, the next one, there's the maceration is a little longer and they age it in oak. So let's check this out. Now, this is a wine that, this is a grape I'm not hugely familiar with, but I've had a few in the past and I've always enjoyed them. So let's check it out. So on the nose, I'm getting first. The first thought was like a cocoa type of cocoa powder type of thing. Um, fruit. I don't get a whole lot of fruit on it, but I, I guess what I, I get is like um, maybe a chocolate covered or cocoa flavored. You know, cocoa and and red fruit. Not to be more specific than that combination, you know, maybe a chocolate-covered strawberry or chocolate-covered cherry. Um, I 
So nothing, nothing spectacular on the nose, but nothing bad, you know, pleasant. So we'll check it out here. I got a phone call. I'll call him back when I'm done with this segment. Get a kind of a continuation, and, and remember that this chocolate-covered red fruit isn't really a lot. It's like a hint. It's like very subtle. Um, I also get a bit of woodiness to it, even though there's no wood involved here. Um, even though there's no wood involved, there's a bit of woodiness to it. pretty good um, there's there's definitely kind of a, a almost a bit of, of a tartness to it uh, so kind of a tart fruit the chocolate has kind of gone away um, again kind of like the Chardonnay nothing really complex about it it's pretty straightforward Low on the tannins, not very tannic at all. Um, so it's a really light wine. Again, really probably needs to be with some food here. Um, it's not a fruit forward wine. It's definitely um, more earth or mineral driven. Um, as I kind of get a little earthiness to it, uh, a little more minerality rather than the fruit on the palate. Um, you can definitely see this being with some like a like a meat dish or meat tray, meat and cheese tray, I think it would go great with that. Actually, I think the pairing would really enhance the wine, enhance the food. You know, getting some salami and prosciutto, you know, that kind of stuff. I really kind of want to have that with it because there's there's a little bit of meatiness to it. Um, but again, it's not overpowering. It's all it's all subtle. It's a very subtle wine. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it better than the Chardonnay. Um, This is a wine that over time I can see really kind of getting into it uh, and probably probably opening up a little more. Definitely recommend it. Again, probably around $10, 8 to $10 a bottle uh, from what I can tell. Um, pretty darn good. I'd, I would totally recommend buying this wine. Now I'm interested to see what the next wine is, uh, which is the Reserva. So uh, we're going to move on to that wine here in just a second. All right, now we're on to wine number three. I also made my phone call to work. Guys who called me. Um, good I do these things in segments anyway. Uh, so anyway, we're moving on to the next wine. Now this is another Negro Amaro. Right, Negro, Negro Amaro. Um, this is 100% Negro Amaro. Is it the Salice Salentino DOC. Now DOC is the, the, the next quality or the, the, you have, you have the, well IGT is generic, not generic, but it's more of a broad thing. But DOC is kind of the entry level, uh, um, call it quality level of Italian wines. Um, just to make sure, because I thought there was, they have like a, they have, well they have table wine. They have a table wine uh, uh, designation. But this is, this is the level above that. Um, so let's, let's look at this real quick. So I want to make sure I get it right. Well, yeah, IG, well, IGT is kind of that, that the second level. DOC is a level above that, technically, but IGT, and the thing is about IGT is that the, the Super Tuscans are the ones that really, um, they, they, they really took the IGT thing and kind of made it, a, I want to say, a better quality than, than it's supposed to be, but it allows them to do whatever they want. So, um, but it's, it's, a, it's, you know, the second quality. This is third, and then DOCG is the top quality level in Italy. All right, so what makes this what it is? Well, this is a Reserva. Uh, it's from 2009. Uh, and what makes it a DOC is a couple of things. It's the aging. Um, it has to be at least six months in barrel, which this is six months in barrel. Uh, one to two year old barriques. 
um, and has to be aged a total of two years. So um, this is 2009. It wasn't released probably until 2011. Um, and it has to be at least, um, what is it, 80%? Uh, has to be at least 80% Negro Amaro. Um, in this case, this is 100% to have the Rosso label. So, uh, yeah, right here. Rosa Reserva. So to get that designation, it has to have uh, fit all those. So that's the difference between an IGT and a DOC. And it's the same grape. So now we're going to see the difference between the two. Let's check it out. Already the, the nose is a little more complex. There's a little more, um, uh, there's actually a little more meatiness to it. I uh, almost want to say there's a little bit of smoke. Kind of like you already put the fire out, so you're kind of like, oh, there, there was a fire here, wasn't there? Some red fruit, but they're, they're kind of muted. It's really more of a, of a earthy or mineral-driven aroma. I'm going to do this because I really am struggling with the nose on it. But yeah, you know, <clears throat> it's more earth-driven. Let's check it out. Let's taste it. more tannic that's the first thing I get out of it a little bit of more as a little more acidity to it um, definitely uh, earth driven um, there's not so much really fruit to it but there's a little bit of fruit but I would say the tannins are medium plus at, at bare minimum this is definitely a wine you need to put with some food put with some put with some meat rather than like a meat and cheese tray need to have more like um, like like uh, brisket pot roast something very f not, not fatty but something with richer something richer you know richer cheeses richer meats you know like a stew like you put it you oh this definitely would go much better with stew I forgot to do I forgot to turn the I forgot to bring my, my shop lights down here you know the lighting looks pretty decent so we'll hopefully the green screen worked it's definitely an earthier wine it's got more body to it it's got more tannins to it it's definitely a, a more aged wine than the other one. It's it's not as young. It's got more flavor to it. Um, you know, there's 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 sour, <clears throat> sour um, uh, red fruits to it. Let's check out this wine real quick. Go back to the first one. And it's pretty amazing. This really is a lighter version of this. Um, the heavier meats, the heavier foods would overpower this wine, uh, the younger wine. And uh, the Reserva is definitely, you know, a more powerful wine. <clears throat> I like it a lot. So far, the wines are being done in probably what's going to be my order of preference as far as taste. Besides that, this one should be the the, the most full-bodied of, of the group. I kind of set it up that way so that I should be kind of going up the, the tannin and body structure. Now, because it is... A reserve one has more aging to it. I'm going to assume it might be a little bit over the $10 range. Um, when I was looking at the, the prices, I didn't, 
I, I did see, I saw a Reserva in, in, in the descriptions. I think this is maybe the only Reserva wine they have. It still was under $10. So I'm going to guess in reality, we're talking maybe $12 to $15 on this bottle. It might be $10. Um, I will, I'll, I'll, the lower thirds will have the, the pricing because I will have uh, uh, sent a note to Jeremy to give me the actual pricing on these wines. Regardless whether it's 15 bucks or 10 bucks, it's, it's a good buy. I would say the only negative I have with it is, is the nose really still is kind of muted. It's not, the nose, it's just both wines, all three wines, it's, it's, the nose doesn't really jump out at you as much as I probably, especially with the, for red wine as I would hope. Um, the flavor profile is good. And uh, I definitely would recommend it. But like I said, you really need some heavier foods with this. This is not a wine you can just kind of sip on, watch a Spurs game. Um, you know, you, you definitely need to be eating dinner with this, or you know, having you know having a good you know a good salami sandwich with some provolone or something like that. You know, something something a little bit meatier and a little bit you know have have a higher fat content. But pretty good. I like it. Again, it's 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 a good value wine. If you see it in the store, I would recommend buying it. Maybe I shouldn't be drinking all that wine. I haven't drank much of the wine yet. Just that. That's about the most I've actually had. I'm getting to the last wine, getting down to the end of recording, so I'll we'll probably actually swallow most of the wine. Anyway, um, I recommend it. Check it out. And uh, we're going to go to wine number four. All right, now we're back with uh, the fourth wine. Now, this is uh, uh, the 2010 uh, Cantele. If I haven't, I really haven't talked about their name too much. Uh, Primitivo. Now, Primitivo, uh, as I think most wine people are starting to know, is the genetic equivalent of Zinfandel uh, that you find in California. And um, I forgot to look it up. Um, but these are, uh, but these, both these grapes actually come from a Croatian grape. And so that I need to look that up real quick because I don't remember the Croatian grape. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. Uh, Kroljanak Kastelanski, as well as. Tribodrag. Yeah, never mind. Um, anyway, so the origins of Zinfandel and Primitivo really come from Croatia. Um, these are genetic equivalents. Because I don't think anyone wants to just say it really is the same grape. Anyway, so um, we're going to check this out now. This is um, oh, oh, also Reserver Agent for, t um, sorry, uh, uh, 10 days maceration, six to seven days on this one. So like I said, it's longer, longer skin contact, longer skin contact, and of course aging. Uh, this one, skin contact for six to seven days, uh, aged for six months in oak barrels. Doesn't say what kind of oak, but that's okay. And uh, one of my favorite varietals. So let's check it out. Again, another IGT Salentino. I'm oh, sorry, Salento, not Salentino. Salento. The other one was Salice Salentino, I, the DOC. Definitely a, a little bit richer on the aroma. Again, not not as um, powerful on the nose as I would as I would like. There was a hint of chocolate when I was doing this. You know, it's, it's earthy on on the nose, but it's, again, I'm struggling with the nose on on these wines. That's, that's probably my only negative with him is that the nose really doesn't jump out as much as I would hope, as I would like.
medium plus on the tannins is the first thing I, I really get out of it. Um, again, earthiness, there's a little bit of woodiness to it. Um, it's uh, not much on the fruit. There's a bit of thinness to it, though. A little bit of water, water, wateriness to it. Um, was kind of hoping for a little, a little more oomph to the wine, and um, but with that said, it's not bad. It's not a bad wine at all. I like it, but I like this. I like this reserve of the best of the four wines. I definitely like it the best. Again, I'm struggling in the nose. <clears throat> I'm getting a little of that rustic woodiness to it now. It's opening up a little bit more. Um, <coughs> a little bit of red fruit, but it's really more of the wood and smoke to it. Um, if you're going to pair this with food, you definitely probably have more of a pasta, sauce, pasta dish with some red sauce, with a meat sauce, but nothing overpowering. You know, you know I, wouldn't, I wouldn't personally uh, put it with any type of stew or any heavy meat like that. Um, I like the wine, though I, I, really, like, I really like this uh, uh, Reserva the best of all four. I remember I mentioned chocolate at the very beginning on, on the um, on the nose. I'm getting a little bit of that chocolate, almost like a, not chocolate covered um, cherry or fruit or anything like that, but just like a pure chocolate aspect. Almost, maybe it's because I remembered I had a Kit Kat, or Kit Kat earlier today, like about five hours ago. But I had, I had a little bit of that milk chocolate type of... Um, memory it's not a bad wine again we're talking eight to ten dollars I think it's if it's that's what you're paying for it you're 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 getting a good wine for that for that price I think there's other wines out there that might be the same price the same varietal whether it's Primitivo or Zinfandel um, that act more like what you're expecting from a Zin. I mean, it's definitely not a Cal... Okay, first of all, this is not California Zinfandel, and it should not be that. It's not that style. If you watched my um, my episode with Messina Hoff, they, they had a Primitivo that was meant to be in the style of an Italian wine. Okay? That also, that bottle also retailed for... I don't know, like 30 something dollars, $40. I forgot how much it retails, but definitely retails for way more than this. Um, this is a lighter version of that. So you're going to have it with lighter foods. Um, it's definitely more mineral driven. It's not fruit forward. You don't have a lot of, just, I don't get a lot of spiciness out of it, no spices. Um, so this is definitely uh, a lighter wine. Um, it's not, it's not, Again, it's not a California Zin. You're not going to get those those uh, those flavors, those aromas that you get from Cali Zin. This is an Italian Primitivo. Um, I just feel it's it's um it's light, probably a little lighter than I would have liked, but at the same time, it's not a bad wine. I think with the right food, it the wine gets enhanced, the food gets enhanced. You know, there's the wine is opening up more now that it's had a little more surface area to air out. It's got been in the it's been in the glass a little bit. Um, it's getting better, uh, but yeah, I would say hands down, my favorite wine is this one. 
the uh, Rosa Reserva, the Salice Salentino, um, Primitivo, and uh, the regular Negro Amaro, um, about equal. And the Chardonnay, again, not a bad Chardonnay. Wouldn't normally think about a Chardonnay from Italy, but if you if you see it, buy it. All four of these wines, I would say, you could buy it. You won't be you won't be disappointed by them. But if I had to pick one, I would pick this one as, as my favorite. Again, it would have to depend on what I'm having for food. The cheese and meat tray really kind of speaks to me on this. This is a little bit lighter, so more maybe more like a, a lunch wine. Like a wine you're gonna have at lunch with a sandwich. Um, like, like you are gonna have that salami sandwich. Um, maybe you're gonna have it with a light red sauce with low acidity. Um, maybe like a, a cheese ravioli, something like that. I mean, I can see doing that with it. This has a little bit more of the meat and cheese tray um, aspect. This is your heartier, like bolognese type of sauce or a, or a stew or a pot roast, something like that. And then the Chardonnay, uh, I just it's, it's a mineral driven Chardonnay. So I would have it more with say salads and things like that. Overall, these wines are, are, are good wines and they're good value wines. Uh, I don't think, like I said, you won't be disappointed by buying any of them. Um, but I think if your palate's like mine, you're going to like the, uh, the Salicia Salentino uh, Reserva much better than the other three. Um, so with that said, thank you, Jeremy, uh, for sending me some wines. I'm uh, definitely going to be enjoying these wines tonight, not all four bottles tonight. But definitely going to be enjoying these bottles while watching the game one of the Spurs. Um, probably not going to be diving into the Indian wine so much. Um, but I might drink a little of that tonight or the next few days. Primitivo is getting better. But I still like this one the best. Anyway, um, that's going to wrap it up for all four wines. Uh, as always, just want to thank everyone for stopping by. Um, hit the donate button. You got the subscription, $5 a month. You got the regular donation. Do whatever you want on that. Um, help me buy some wine. Um, friend me up above. Leave comments below. Um, check out check out uh, Cantelli's website. Uh, they look like some other wines in here that are probably pretty... Again, these, these are good. But other wines, I think, they'd be really kind of neat to try out. Um... <clears throat> So if I'm out there in the store, I'm gonna look for I'm gonna look for this brand so I can have more of these wines. Um, so check out there. Check out uh, Jeremy's website. Um, he's got some good stuff on there, by the way. So uh, you need to check it out. He's a cool cat uh, into music and all that. Guitar player. I have yet to hear him play, but you know, I imagine he's pretty darn good. And um, we'll see everyone again next time. <laughs>